Okay, I got enough now. That hay was almost as long as the break that we took. Yeah, exactly. We've been <laughs> off for two weeks. Long time no talky. But we still provided content. Oh, boy, did we provide you content. Thank you, Annette, so much. She was great. It was fun. If you haven't listened to our Annette Badlands interview, what have you been doing? One of my friends at work said we should make a t-shirt that says, Grandkids? Kittens? <laughs> if you listen to the episode, you know what that means. You're getting a joke. Mystery Maniacs is a comedy recap podcast dedicated to mystery TV. Each week we dig into an episode of a show including the murders, the mayhem, the loonies, and everything else we love. This week, Murder Mysteries Season 1, Episode 11, Bad Medicine. And if you've forgotten, I'm Sarah. And I'm Mark. (laughs) And I'm not John Bon Jovi. What? Because your love is like bad medicine. Oh. Oh, wow. Wow. And yeah, he does have a frog in his throat. He has been to Canada and he brought a frog back. I don't know what that is. I went to Canada and guess what? It was cold. Is that why your throat's like Maybe. that right now? <laughs> it just started yesterday. <laughs> I think you were there screaming, ah, lost your voice. Maybe. But Maybe. it wasn't for hockey that you were screaming. Speak not of the hockey. Hockey <laughs> is all done and apparently my hockey team is all destroyed. So... <laughs> Maybe hockey will never come back ever again. (laughs) (laughs) That makes you feel better. (laughs) We'll just say no more about it. Wow. Though I will say, while you were gone, so maybe some of you have this too with your significant other. We have sort of an informal arrangement that when one of us is away, there are certain things on TV the other one does not watch without them. Yes. It's like Netflix infidelity or something. That if it's something that we watch together, we don't watch it apart. We wait and we watch it together. So if, if New Midsummer's arrived while I was away, I would not have watched not them have watched until them. you got okay. home. That. So that that means that I'm left trying to find something to watch that yes. you won't like. Yes, basically something I think I will enjoy, but that you won't be like, ah, oh, I want to watch that. Yes. So. With that being said, I watched a show called School Spirits this week on Paramount Plus that's about a girl who dies in her high school. She wakes up as a ghost in Mm -hmm. the high school, along with a lot of other people from different time periods who also died thereabouts. So it's like ghosts with teens but romance and scary? Yeah. it's No, it's a really good mystery is what oh, it is. it's a good mystery. It's a really good mystery. Oh, that's it's good. eight episodes, about an hour a piece. It's not gory, but it's also not teeny bopper or kissy kiss either. Um, it has a little levity in it, but it's a it's a really good mystery. Oh, that's So cool. I recommend it. It's Paramount Plus also has Mrs. Davis, which is currently one of our favorite television shows. It's about a nun fighting an evil AI. I'm going to go crazy and say it is right now now there are two episodes left Mm -hmm. it's gotta stick the ending yeah but it is in my opinion one of the top 10 shows of all time it's one of the best written things on tv in a long time that's for sure it's utterly unpredictable if my my brother who i saw in canada said that he had watched the first two episodes i was like i know so much that you don't know (laughs) and and you won't even be able to guess yeah (laughs) it's so unpredictable but really really good so if you're looking for something unpredictable if you're looking for something to watch i would strongly recommend mrs davis if you uh, spirits if you watch if you watch the movie everything everywhere all at once and enjoyed it mrs davis is kind of in that vein yeah, you'll like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you may have also noticed that there is new Broken Wood out on Acorn. Yep. Um, as well as new Dag Leash. The Which, new the new Dag Leashes are really good. If oh, you ever he's he's read, at a poetry reading in yes, one of them. Yes. If you ever read the books or you watch the old version, I, I really like this. It's really well done. Yeah. And he has fantastic hair. He does. And a great poetry reading voice. And the actor's name is Bart. Isn't it? Birdie. Birdie, that's it. Yes. <laughs> He's the best looking birdie I've ever seen. He's <laughs> handsome for a birdie. Speaking of 
Midsummer. Also, uh, on Sunday Wait the 28th. Who was speaking of Midsummer? I don't know. That's what I'm going with. Okay. This segue. <laughs> nice segue. Sunday 28th on ITV. Uh, for our British listeners, you will finally get For Death Prepare. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, about a month ago, you were supposed to get it, and then some royal dropped a book and. The interview takes precedence and blah, 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 blah. So barring royal emergency. Yes. Like another coronation for fun or something? Sunday the 28th on ITV, you should get for Death Prepare, which is the Midsummer Korean episode. Mm -hmm. So go listen to the mini first, watch the episode, and then listen to the full episode. And that'll be on all our socials this week. I'll push that out to our socials, the mini and the full episode. Are you ready to talk about bad medicine? I am ready to talk about Bad Medicine. Original air date, March 31st, 2008. Directed by Jean Lecaire. L apostrophe E-C-U-Y-E-R. Dude, by a consonant for your name. And Derek Schreider wrote it. Okay. It's a crossbow. This is a great, great cold opening for an episode that needs some work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it started off real strong. Yep. And then the plot gets a bit dubious. First of all, they're in a park. Guys is it a park it. or is it the grounds of the Institute? It's a park nearby. They oh, okay. named the park. It's later near on. the Brain Institute. Yeah. Yes. The Institute for, the, for Minds. The Brain Institute. And okay. there is a cloaked figure with a crossbow. Instant drama. I, uh, at least run in a zigzag or something. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody shooting you in the back with a crossbow. Like, I don't know, duck, ravine. Get something that will cover you. Lay down. Stand behind that light pole. Trash can. Lid. Something. I don't know. He's running and it's sticking out his back. Yeah. And kind like of wobbling he's got two around. Already. Oh, it just it would hurt so much. Yeah, and he, he's still yelling, help me, help me. I would assume that he would be screaming, but also maybe his lungs have collapsed. Yeah, I would think they'd be close to it. Yeah. So this is do Dr. You, Francis Grout. Yes. Do you know why they're called bolts? No. Um, because originally, this is what is suspected. There, so bolts go in crossbows and arrows go in bows. Mm-hmm. But that's different now. Now all the crossbows that you can buy all take arrows too. Okay. They're usually shorter and more stout. Right. Like bigger around. And these certainly fit that. The crossbow he has, it's a modern crossbow. It's a, it's a crossbow from mid-century. It's not super modern. It's not like one of the fiberglass ones no, they no, use now. No, no, You watch the Olympics and crossbows, they don't even look like crossbows anymore. No, no. It's like those electric violins that don't look like violins. Yes. They're really techy. So originally crossbows were giant, right? They were siege weaponry. Yeah. You that, had to cock them with your foot, didn't you? Oh, even bigger than that. Like, or, or, yeah, a crank, like yeah, a couple like of people. a huge crank. And they used to shoot basically trees. Yeah. Right? But these trees were squared, not round. And that's why they're bolts. And that's why they're called bolts. Interesting, because everything else called a bolt is round, is cylindrical, like a bolt of fabric yeah. or nuts and bolts. Yep. Huh. I would want know. one of those things screaming at me. But there's either, bolts of lightning, too. E- I don't know. Either the bolt from this crossbow or <laughs> that giant one. You don't think you can dodge a log? No. Come on, they couldn't have moved very fast. <laughs> the, some of those siege weaponry. Get the really big rubber band. Some of those siege weaponry. They must have shot it for the first time and everybody went, Whoa. what the hell was that? Okay, we're going to need some chucks under the wheels because it moved backwards as far as the bolt moved forward. And Birdie got run over. Yeah. Yeah, so he gets shot a few times, goes down, yells now he, help. He goes down in front, like right beside a lamp post Mm. and then we do scene of the crime next in a pretty nice transition by the way bolt cam we didn't even talk about that you know how they film that Uh, camera uh bolt tape to the camera yes and then they just spin the camera around (laughs) oh okay (laughs) like they don't actually make the camera go like a long distance i mean they didn't duct tape a gopro to it and shoot it out of an actual crossbow no they didn't (laughs) why not that would have been fun yeah and so grout has painted w y well we'll talk about whether it was grout or not with his own blood on a handy dandy rock how does he get to the blood (laughs) 
That's a good question and one I wondered too. Unless it's dribbling out his face. Maybe. If you've got that many internal injuries, you might be drooling blood a little bit. Maybe. But it's really solid. Those letters are really well constructed. Otherwise, he's got to reach around. Like when you've got an itch on your back that's kind of hard to reach. (sighs) And like (sighs) stick your finger in the wound and like. (laughs) Okay, I got enough now. That's one But the rock is nowhere near him when he falls. There's a problem here. I don't think he did it. I don't think he did it either, and I think the body's been moved. Yeah, I think the killer. Remember, this is a spoiler podcast. We're going to talk about who did it. Yes. If you haven't watched the episode, stop right now, because the killer is Benny. Benny. Richard Benny. Yes. So Richard shoots him several times, then I think moves the body, dips his own finger in Grout's blood, and writes on the rock. I totally agree. And it's definitely one of those cases where, you know, like when you were a kid and you start making a poster or something and you think you've got the letters spaced, but by the time you get to the end of a word, you're like right and small. Yes. Like Wickham was not going to fit on that rock. No. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe he should have brought like a quill or something to dip. Or maybe like (laughs) there's an outtake. There's a lot of outtakes in this episode where the killer's running back and forth from like a pile of rocks trying to find a rock. Yeah. (laughs) That one work? W Y K E. Oh, there's an H. H A. No, it's not going to fit. Damn it. Maybe he should have just written, drawn a map of the street. Maybe. And put a little fingerprint of blood on where the fire happened. Never mind the and fact. An arrow. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind the fact that all of this is like, there's some Scooby Doo Miss Marpleness here. <laughs> <laughs> like, no killer would do this. Yeah. I was looking at the letters going, could it be an M? It could be an M, not could a W. Be. But Y's upside down don't really make anything. No. <laughs> but I was looking into it. Like, they could have it wrong. It could be sideways, right? Yeah, I don't know where he supposedly got the blood if he did it himself. It's clear he didn't do it himself. And this is... Uh- I wouldn't be surprised if this was also an episode that they moved back in the schedule. mm because, like, Murdoch is like, well, George, it's like this. I'm like, George knows this mm-hmm. already. But then <laughs> Julie appears and slays. <laughs> She's like, hi, I'm Julia. I'm really smart and I'm really funny, but you're never going to laugh at my jokes. Huh. Julia in the first <laughs> season just slays. She is the funniest character. Yeah, she's really funny. And she just has to make light of things. And Murdoch just... Even and, George is like, really? You're uh, joking? Really? Come on, dudes. Uh, the Center for the Mind, the Institute for the Mind, is founded by Grout, who's now dead, and yes. Grayson. Yes. Grout and Grayson. Grayson's first name is Burrit. Burrit. B-U-R-R-I-T. Yes. Which I had never heard of a Burrit before. No. And I went looking to see the origin of this name. Yes. Forget about it. Okay. Google doesn't accept it. It's burrito. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It autocorrected it over and over and over again. I put it in quotes and it said burrit in quotes plus O and gave me results for burrito. <laughs> no matter what I did, it was burrito. I am now calling him Dr. Burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, first name origin burrit. Nope, Dr. Burrito. First name origin burrito. No, just burrito. Here you go. No, origin of burrito. No, no, Google, no. It's a bad 70s Batman villain. I gave Dr. up. Dr. Burrito. I gave up. <laughs> I like, I don't care what his name is. Never mind. Ugh. There is a family in England whose surname is Burrit with two T's at the end. But the only thing that is B-U-R-R-I-T is the word that ends in O. <laughs> I gave up. No, not burrito. And if you see burrito commercials during our podcast, it's because the algorithm picked up burrito. I just want to smack this man anyway, because he's like, well, women's brains are feeble and they're 19% smaller and their organs sap their mental energy. And like, okay, if anybody thinks with their organs, it's not women. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If anybody's brain is getting sapped by their organs, it's not women. What I'm glad is now. But it's totally typical of the time. That's how it's people totally thought. typical of the time. But I would say season two on, Murdoch is going to say something to him. Yeah, they get less concerned with being uh, non. They get they're less worried about avoiding anachronisms in the way people think. And I think 
I think they want to show Murdoch as a progressive thinking individual. Yes. So so he would have said, um, actually, there was a study that weighed a thousand brains and yes. the women's brains were just as big and blah, blah, blah. Yep, yep. Speaking of women's brains, Miss Pencil is in this episode Ms. too. Miss Pencil. Do you think this was, well, Maria, we signed you up for two episodes, so we're going to put you in this one. Maybe, because she does fit. Yep. But the character is problematic in this episode. And I'm just going to say it right now. Yep. And people can argue with me if they disagree. I'm all for it. In this episode, psychics are real, period. Yep. She knows stuff she couldn't know any other way. The psychics and are real in this episode. He doesn't solve the case without her psychic abilities. She provides yep. evidence they can't get any other way. Yeah. And in her first episode, there was a little bit of psychic stuff and the ghost of the belly talker. Those three things, you never see anything like those again. Well, in her first episode. Well, except for how it's Halloween kind episodes. of explainable. <laughs> yeah. There are other ways she could know what she knows if she was super resourceful. Yes. And and kind and sneaky, right? And she does have a sidekick who's doing research for her yep. and gathering information. So we kind of think, okay, so that's how she did it. And so they kind of explain it away. But in this episode, that doesn't happen. No. She provides key pieces of evidence. They could not solve the, the case without her. And there's no way she could know those things. No. And that's not what Murdoch is. Unless she's a much better detective than the entire police. Well. And better, doesn't want anybody to know. Better than George and Henry. <laughs> well, they're special. Uh, there's mention of the Grim Reaper here. Do you know when the Grim Reaper happened or like at when it became popular and where it came from? Well, the cloaked figure of a like a skeleton with a scythe goes back to at least medieval ages. But I don't know yeah. what they called. I mean, just death. So well, I don't know. So death before this came in a bunch of different forms. Mm -hmm. And death in the four horsemen in the Bible is not described. In fact, is the only one actually named. The name of the four horsemen, that's all medieval created. Mm -hmm. Really, the idea of uh, a cloaked skeletal figure with a scythe dealing with death comes out of European folklore and really is a meme that is created because of the Black Death. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's a shorthand for Black Death in art at that point. Well, he's not the Grim Reaper anyway. He's Hell's version of Robin Hood. Yes. He's not a Grim <laughs> Reaper. There's no skeletal. And he doesn't have a, a scythe. scythe. Yeah. No, he's evil Robin Hood. I mean, he's trying to, to right wrongs. Yeah. And they do, <laughs> they do a good job here because everything Miss Pencil says is easily cold reading. Right. The murderer is angry. His Initially, face is yes. Obscure. The first time she visits Murdoch and says, you know, you're the you're one of the victims. Hey, yeah, everything she says there could be called reading, could be stuff she heard, picked up from chitter chatter. And of course, saying you're going to be one of the victims means that they're going to listen. So if she wants to insinuate herself into the investigation. That's the way to do it. But after that, she starts having visions and stuff that she learns things that she can't know. And I'm going to say that Bracken Reed would know Mr. Hyde, but not Frankenstein. Why? That book was not as popular as you think it was until the movie in the 20s. Hmm. Mostly because it was written by a woman. Oh, well, you know, those ladies. Yeah. With their mental capacities sapped by their organs. Oh. Murdoch should just punch him. He would be hysterical. And like, like women. And like he's totally, it, like, I, I realize that I'm going to harp on this, but there should have been a, a thing where, like, Julia and, and Murdoch discuss that. Mm -hmm. And it, that's a perfect flirty little opportunity. Yeah, for her to fill him in on actually that's not true. Yeah. And he could say, that's, well, that's just your uterus well, talking. I never thought of you like that or... <laughs> no, he'd say that's, the end that's was, just your organs talking, Julia. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Dr. Burrito Grayson is wrong for other reasons, too, though. He stands right in front of patients and talks about them like they can't hear him. Yes. <laughs> he is the worst. Like his University of Toronto School of Medicine diploma that is on the wall should be removed. <laughs> yeah, it sh they should take it back. Like, I don't even know why Miss Pringle is there. She plays the violin and is empathetic. She's empathetic. Well, that makes her insane. I guess. She can play a violin and she's empathetic. Mr. Horton has extraordinary recall. So this is a nod to like. 
savant, savant autistic. autistic. Yeah, he has synesthesia. He can. He's memorized pi. He knows the weather, the days of the week from long ago. Yes, that kind of. And that's and that's a trick, by the way. People who could tell you what day of the week something oh, is, yeah, they, totally they're just doing math in their head. July seventh, eighteen eighty-eight. It was eighty point nine six degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> in Toronto. Just so you know. Good 20, job, Horton. Twenty-seven you were point close. two percent Fahrenheit. Uh, 27.2 Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius. Then there's Benny, paralyzed by a stroke, but he has a bell. Yes. And he says, again, right in front of him, it can get a bit tedious. Okay, well, you're a bit rude. Mostly, it can get tedious because he's the killer. But, but but Mr. Tinker can see in three dimensions. Mr. Nesbitt. You know, Who's built I the first motorized wheelchair. in three dimensions also. No, he's like Leonardo da Vinci. We have... Maybe he can see around corners. Eyes that... Face forward so we can see in three dimensions. Oh, boy. And then Nurse Barrington. And that's kind of the cast. That's everybody. Yeah, and that scene is a real uh, Agatha Christie. Here are the suspects. Yes, all sitting in the same room doing separate things so we can stand over them and talk about them as if they can't hear us. Ding. I love that. Benny just runs into people with his wheelchair, <laughs> like tries to take Murdoch's legs out. <laughs> Zoom. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> mom, mom, I got a part. I'm a crap artist at the station. Oh, yeah, the sketch artist? Yes. <laughs> this is a very angular Grim Reaper. Okay, I could draw a better Grim Reaper than that, and I cannot draw. Okay, I love you and everything, but no, you couldn't. <laughs> You're that bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I gave you tracing paper, I don't know that you could trace it better than that. <laughs> I've seen it. You make a good effort, honey. But, I do. But I don't know that it would turn out any better than that. <laughs> she has another vision. There's a hollow screech. Somebody saying no. And Murdoch getting shot. <laughs> no. There's a woman behind him in the vision and it's her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. She should maybe say that. So let's unpack this a little bit. So we we know that Benny is the killer and that he's not really paralyzed. Okay. Yes. So how long has he been at the Institute pretending to be paralyzed? It is implied later on two years he's been working on this. Damn. <laughs> that is some patience. Why does he not just kill him right away? I don't know. Like, and why does think he about have to what, kill the other doctor first? Think about what he's been going through for two years. Yeah. All of his bodily functions taken care of by somebody else. Yeah. Somebody else dressing him. Somebody else feeding him. Yeah. Probably through a tube to his stomach. If he can't chew because he's paralyzed. Yeah, and Nesbitt may have figured it out. Yeah, because he spent five minutes with him. Yeah. Just imagine if you were pretending to be paralyzed and you had an itch. No. Oh. It would make you crazy. <laughs> Did he, like, dance when he was in his room? At yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hear strange movement in the hallway. Yeah, it's Benny walking around because he can. Sat in that chair all day. A real detective would just look at the bottom of his shoes. Yes, that is what a real detective would do. So all of the W files are missing from Grout's office. Why? Maybe there's nobody with a W. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> they couldn't find anybody working there with a W, except the one guy who's long gone. So we have to assume, though, that Benny took them. Yes. So Benny wants revenge for his girlfriend, who Grayson and Grout performed something like a lobotomy on. She lost her memory. Forgot yep. who he was, then died in a fire, and he wants to avenge her. And though he doesn't... Do you think Dr. Burrito started the fire? No. Okay, I don't believe I said that sentence in English. <laughs> <laughs> but I think after two years of pretending to be paralyzed, Benny is sort of losing it a I bit th- more than your average killer. I think he has lost it. So he want he doesn't just want vengeance, he wants it to be known what happened. Yes. He Is wants- that a typewriter in Benny's room? No. <laughs> He's paralyzed. He wants them to figure out why this is happening, I think. And that's why he paints the W-Y on the rock. That's why he steals all the W files. Yes. Now, why would he take the W files when her last name is Chaucer? I do not know. His girlfriend's last name who's died. I still think no one in the Institute has a W name. 
<laughs> it's not that they've been stolen. There were just never any there. <laughs> there's all these Zs at the end, though, but there's no Ws. Mr. Viggins, we cannot help you. <laughs> no, sorry. We cannot take any patience with the W. What is the paste on the banister? Okay, the paste on the banister. Because this is a clue that Murdoch and Crabtree find. Is his hair coloring that he puts on his hair to change his hair color. Because in the picture... That he finds later in the newspaper, he has a different hair color. It's darker now. And the people who are taking care of him at the Institute <laughs> and his paralyzed body don't notice that he's putting goop in his hair to change the color? <laughs> Again, there is some explanation that maybe did not make it into this episode. And he's wearing a robe with a hood and you can't see his hair anyway. Yeah. And how does his head touch the banister? No, it's his hand because he's touched his head. So his hands are just covered in hair color goop? Doesn't it get over he goes? the bell? <laughs> it would be everywhere if it was that easy to transfer. Oh, you got it on my crossbow. <laughs> and it's a paste? Yeah. You'd think it would just be like a tinted hair oil or something. Something. Yeah. Oh, imagine putting paste in your hair. Scream, pause, boom. <laughs> 24. <laughs> it's like that horrible Dora with the oh, God. chick boom. Oh. oh. Crossbow, hallway, die. <laughs> Crossbow, hallway, die. Oh, if you've never seen Dora, thank your lucky stars. Yep. Um, so Benny says that he sees the Reaper. Well, of course he does. Yeah. <laughs> I saw me in the hallway. It was me. I saw me. Did, 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 did. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> so then Pencil goes undercover. Yes. As herself. Yes. Which I guess she has to do. And this is like one of those great sitcom moments where Murdoch walks up to her and goes, oh, and what is your name, young lady? And she goes, Miss Pencil. And then they're like, blah, 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 blah. Nobody will notice us and having a conversation. Goes, it well, was nice to, to meet, meet you, you. Miss Pencil. Like everyone would be looking at them in the room going, you two obviously know each other. And she says, if I see anything, I will be sure to give you a call, Detective Murdoch. <laughs> I have a small brain pan, so. Do you think we pulled it off? I think we pulled I it off. Okay, bye. It. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they learned about Wickham. Oh, she uses the SP cards at the beginning. Yeah, like in Ghostbusters. Like she gets them all right because she's actually psychic. She's yeah, magic. those cards are based on a like a '60s experiment, yeah. not. But she's magic, not an 1860s experiment, and she gets them all right. No, she's magic, Mark. Okay, she brought them from the future. Six <laughs> cents. When do you think that term was first used? I don't know. First mention of six cents occurred in 1712. Wow. In William Whitman's prim uh, primitive. Christianity Revived, Volume 5, then said Peter, that is false, for there is a sixth sense of that of prescience for the other five senses that are capable of knowledge and the sixth foreknowledge, Ooh. which is a sense that prophets had. I see dead people. I see dead she sees dead people. Where does the word Wickham come from? Where, where in the, where in the episode well, is it okay, revealed? Okay, the, the, it's Murdoch gets a mail, mm -hmm. and uh, the first question is like, does he always open his mail with tweeters <laughs> when he's on a case? I guess it's kind of sus. So then he no, says something. No return address. Then he says something, which we'll get to, and then. I'm off on a completely different tangent. So where does Wickham come from? It comes from that letter, right? That's been typed and mailed to him. Mm -hmm. Who sent it? Benny. Benny must have sent it. Yes. So Benny is giving them clues. Where did he get a typewriter? How did he get it in the post box? How did he, like, that is a process in which it's noticeable that you are not paralyzed. <laughs> if it was handwritten, yeah. I could see how he might have pulled it off, right? Because he's sneaking around at night. Throw it in. Writes him. a letter, puts it in with the other post. But typewriters make way too much noise. They do, in fact, make lots of noise. So unless they're like, there's also a ghostly typewriter here. We hear it typing at night. You know, <laughs> it couldn't be Benny. He's in bed and paralyzed. Yep. Yeah, I, I have a hard time believing that. Yes. What I have a harder time believing is that Murdoch gets the point wrong. The font point, yes. the size? 
it would be 12.8 on a Remington of that time period. Always? Yes. Might they not have had special ones for doctors that were smaller so they could type more? Perhaps. Compact? But Remington was well known for doing 12 characters per inch, which is 12 point. Well, aren't you a typewriter nerd? Congratulations. Yes, I am. I also have about a half page of notes that I'm going to skip over for now. <laughs> I got something interesting about Wickham or Wickham. Wickham, what do you got? So I went looking for that name. And among other things, there are two medieval villages that are no longer there in England called Wickham. Oh, okay. It's one of those East Wickham, West Wickham things. Oh, okay. But here's what I didn't know. Did the time team go there? I think they might have gone there. I don't know. Okay. I didn't have time to look that up. But what I did learn is that there's a term for these villages that are long gone. Okay. They called them deserted medieval villages or DMVs. DMVs. And there's about 900 DMVs in now the UK there, alone. There is a theory that these some of these villages became deserted because of the Black Death. Yes. And that's been disproven now. Yes. A lot of it's enclosure. Yeah. The Lord of the Manor said, you know, I would rather go shooting there than have these peasants there. Yes. So I'm going to run them all off. It has far more to do with economics and than knock the all their death. houses down. Yep. Yeah. But I just think it's funny that they call them DMV because in the U S DMV is the department of motor vehicles. Yes. And you go to the DMV to get a new license plate or get a license, the driver's license or whatever. So the fact that there's 900 DMVs in the UK and when you get there, it would just be some lumps and bumps under some grass. You're not going to get any business done. Nurse Barrington is not only a nurse. She's a sleight of hand artist. Okay. She's a magician. She, okay. Magic is real in this episode, okay. Mark. Okay. She so, casts a spell and puts a note in Murdoch's pocket without moving so her hands. So the idea is that she passes Nurdoch. Nurdoch. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. <Nerdoch. laughs> Dr. Burrito and Nurdoch. <laughs> she passes Murdoch a note, but, and I watch this really closely, <laughs> she never touches him. <laughs> Benny comes between them, okay, runs over Murdoch's foot. She chastises Benny and then leaves. Because, when does she put it in his pocket? And then Murdoch takes his notebook out and the note clearly falls from his pocket. How does she get the note in his pocket? Fishing line? I, <laughs> invisible thread? Magic? Magic. <laughs> yes. Nurse magic. You wouldn't understand. Meet me at eight at Elmar Park. Where you'll find me dead. Yes. <laughs> wow. There are a lot... There, this is like midsummer, and the, the dead bodies are piling up here. Yeah. This is like, okay, here we go. Here we go. Another dead. And she has a letter on her that, why wouldn't the killer have taken it? I guess he didn't know. I guess Benny didn't know she had it. Or he planted it. Benny and the bolts. Because the letter is from Grout yep. about burying Wickham. Yes. And I don't know. I'm torn on this one. Part of me thinks... Was that in the Wickham file? Oh, no, wait. There wasn't a Wickham file. Yeah, because they don't have files based on the street that somebody died on. That's not how you alphabetize patient files. That would be the weirdest way. (laughs) What's your address again? (laughs) Are you going to die there? Okay, that's what I'll file it under. be so impossible. Phone books would be real weird. (laughs) 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 Maybe Benny put it in her purse. But again, why does he want people like he wants people to know what happened to the then love of his life? Then why doesn't he kill the guy who did it? He hasn't gotten to him yet. <sighs> I can't kill Doctor Burrito yet. I don't know why he has to kill the nurse at all. She's about to provide Murdoch with important information about what Grayson and Grout did, and that's to his benefit. I think he's just gone crazy because he can actually walk around in the cloak, and he's like. <laughs> I'm going to kill everybody. I don't know why he didn't just report them. Look, they lobotomized my girlfriend and then let her burn to death. Well, and Julia says that people talk about this guy. Like, so already there's stuff going on. Bracken Reed at the seance is the best thing ever. Okay, first of all, if you're doing a seance, you hold hands. Is that like a legit requirement? Yes. How do you keep the connection if you don't hold hands? (laughs) I didn't know that was a real thing. Second of all. You say that like it's scientific fact that it won't work. This thing that doesn't 
really work. Even Dr. Burrito with his giant brain knows that. <laughs> well, that's why, you know, Miss Pencil can't know it. Her name sounds like stationary and she's a woman, so she's and stupid. It, at first, I'm like, how do they get in there? Where are they? They've got to be in her room at they're, the Institute. They're in their room at the Institute. I think her cover's kind of blown. <laughs> if the cops are sitting in her room yeah, having a they, seance late at night, maybe they snuck in that window that's open behind them. Well, let's turn up the gas on the on the um, lamp up and down, up and down. Up but down. it's a wick and an oil lamp. Yeah. You can't do that I unless know. you actually touch the knob, honey. I know. Can you smell that? <laughs> Brackenweed's like, sorry, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret's been making beans again. It was. Like, <laughs> How does she know this without having psychic powers? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know she, how she finds out that there was a fire in a building on Wickham that they, they, then the police then find out that it's Sophia Chaucer who died there. What are you doing? Sleeping. Was, does Murdoch green and green all the time? I don't know, but the Why hallways in that building are. Well, okay. So this is a Greenland thing, but that hallway, they use it 15 ways sideways. Oh, yeah. It is the same hallway. <laughs> it is a building made up of one room and two hallways yeah. that intersect each other. <laughs> yeah. That have gothic vaulted entries. All the doors have a point at the top. I don't know what this building is, but man, they made use of that hallway. So then the Reaper. She was burned beyond recognition. So how do they know it was her? I don't know. <laughs> She was the only crazy person locked in that building when we torched it, so it must have been her. Oh, she used to. Did go I just give too it. much away? <laughs> she used to go around at night with a cloak on, shooting people with her bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. Going, who are you again? Who are you again? So Murdoch and Miss Pencil run into the Reaper. Yes. Like, just look at his shoes. It's Benny. Those are Benny's shoes. Benny's white cuffs. He's got a callus from his bell. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's him. Yeah. Like. Totally, it's him. Where does he keep the bolts? Does he have a pocket in his, his robes? His bolt, Benny's bolt pocket. <laughs> <laughs> no, in a bag. Benny's bolt bag. <laughs> he doesn't have a bag. Uh, he, uh, the music here gets into the bum, 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 Well, bum, yeah, bum. because he's about to be shot. Yep. yep. And Murdoch just charges around. Like, after Pencil says, you're going to be shot, he should be wearing, like, armor. Something. <laughs> Under his vest, like medieval armor or something. The first time I saw this episode and he got shot, I thought, but he's not going to die. So he must have like a vest on something, you know, like, and that's a great, like, I have a copy of Darwin tucked in my pocket and, and it, hit the, a, it hit the book. It's a great Murdoch invention thing. Oh yeah. That he could have had something on something that on. protected him yeah. to show that he actually took the psychic seriously. Yeah. Or he wouldn't have been wearing it. I yeah, guess. they missed they missed a, an opportunity there. So he finds a feather in Grayson's office, and then there's a, this implication that they find the Reaper outfit too. Mm -hmm. But like, we never see that. Yeah, that got dropped. That on got the cutting cut. Room, cutting room floor. So Benny plants part of a, a bolt and the hood. Yeah. The cloak in Grayson's office. Clearly wants Grayson to get in trouble rather than killing him. You got nothing on me, coppers. <laughs> he is utterly reprehensible. Yeah. Grayson is just horrible. All surgeries risk, especially when I poke her eye out. Yeah. Like, well, not to me. It's not a risk to me. It's a risk to the person that I'm operating on in the basement of a lodge. What the hell is a lodge anyway? I don't know. Is this like a Masonic lodge that he rents the basement? Of, of its time. So what? Yeah. You removed a woman's mind from her years ahead of your time. Okay. We find out that Sophia Chaucer's parents are dead. Yeah. Her mom died in childbirth and her dad died of complications from Quincy. Yeah. Which is the most disgusting tonsillitis you can get. Oh my gosh. It is an abscess that forms between one of your to tonsils and the wall of your throat. I thought you were going to say toenail. <laughs> your toenail and your tonsils. No, Somewhere you in there. <laughs> That's a lot of room to that cover. <laughs> That's a big abscess if it takes all that space. Commonly affects teenagers and young adults. Whoa! And if it busts, you can aspirate and drown on your own pus. Yes. Awesome. 
What a way to die of but, a, the worst sore throat in existence. <laughs> By the way, Chaser also was an archer. Chaucer? Yes, Chaucer. Yeah, but she she shot a real bow. Yes. The blackboard that is in Murdoch's room is now working on how to estimate time of death. Yeah, it's they all about it. temperature and yep. rigor mortis. I don't know why they let a woman have a bow. I well, mean, we're too stupid. It says in the article that she was a world champion. Yeah. Like... Her name should be the Archer, comma, Sophia Chaucer. Yeah. And nobody missed her when she went missing after having her lobotomy or whatever. World champion. Yeah. She was special. And Benny's going to avenge her. Yeah. And he shoots Murdoch. But then Miss Pringle, she of the chip fortune, bashes him on the head. That's for my non-monocle wearing dad with a mustache. Bang. Whammo. He takes the uh, crossbow out from under his bed. Mm -hmm. Would they have not have searched that? No, they're not going to search the the paralyzed guy's room. What can he have? Okay, but that's Come on, Mark. That is not how search works. It's how Henry and George do it. There's kind of a, (laughs) when he's running- he, he kind of skids, too. It's just, there's kind of a whoop, whoop, whoop moment. Yeah, he's he's athletic. For a guy yeah. who doesn't move 23 hours a day, Yeah, he's pretty agile when he does. It's that magic hair putty he wears. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> and Murdoch gets shot. Mm, but he survives. Well, the show is named after him, so... It kind of sucks if he dies. I don't think he's going to die. <laughs> he's got to use a cane. It's pretty amazing that he gets shot and it misses all of his important organs. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, obviously, Miss Pencil has invited him out to talk. Mm -hmm. Why does she choose to invite (laughs) him out to like a park far away from everything? (laughs) Let's meet on this promontory that you can only walk up a hill to get to and no vehicles can get there. That's a perfect place to meet for you as you recover. (laughs) From your being shot with a crossbow. And is she worried about her hat flying away or what? Uh, it's like a it's like a um a derby, but it's like tied to her head so tight. It's a weird derby. <laughs> like, too. like that hat is about to take off or something. So then and this is what comes to my end comments for the whole episode is this is an episode written by a writer who's new to writing television Mm. because she says the thing that i hate which is it's a gift and a curse like that is a cliche yeah and then she does in the next sentence she explains why it's a gift and a curse and they could have easily cut that line about the gift and the curse yeah it's a great example of show don't tell Yeah. She shows in the second sentence, but tells in the first sentence. But the same writer does an awesome thing with Julia here. Yes. In 99.9% of shows, Julia would have walked behind Miss Pencil and Murdoch talking and went, huh, I guess he's into her. And walked off in a snoot and then not talked to him for three episodes. Yeah. But Julia doesn't do that. She walks right over and says, hello. And sits down and they have a Murdoch sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) Julia's wearing a boater and she doesn't tie hers down. No, she doesn't. She could stand the wind of the boater. She's confident in the security of her hat. But Julia clearly hates her right away. Well, yeah. She's like, yeah, goodbye. Go to Prague. It's great there. Don't come back. Anyway. (laughs) She's nice. But then Murdoch does the absolute right thing, which is turns around and says, tell me everything about Prague. Mm -hmm. And she says he has a journal. She has a journal. And he says, I'd love to read it. Which is like, let me go through your underwear drawer. (laughs) Which I think she implies. Like, she's like, William. Really? Really? Maybe excerpts. Maybe excerpts. That is a perfect ending. And, okay, so... Murdoch is not into Miss Pencil. No. It's Miss Pencil. I thought... I thought, Is she into him? I thought there was a whole bunch more Murdoch, Miss Pencil. I, well, she comes back. She does. But I... She's psychic, so she knows the future. And she knows that Murdoch and Julia belong together. Yeah, like... So I think she knows better than to interfere, but I think she does like okay. appreciate him. We said that we weren't going to do spoilers, but... Okay, a blind, stupid person named Dr. Burrito would, would, know. would know 
that Murdoch and Julia eventually will have a relationship. Yes. Yes, they will. And I think Miss Pencil, being a psychic, knows that she has no place in that. Yes, I agree with all of that. So she's going to go to Prague with her strapped down hat. Maybe she has that hat on because she's going on a boat. Maybe. Like an open air boat long, or something. <laughs> how long would it get to, take to get to Prague? Uh, not that long. And most of it would be interior rivers, I would think. Wouldn't it? And you're wrong. She is in two episodes. That's it. Really? We never see. I the, thought she was in more episodes. I thought she was in more episodes. And I thought there was far more flirtation going on with Miss oh, I didn't think there was that, but I thought there was at least one more with her in it. I'm imagining that. Yeah. So, so did I. So we're left with these questions. Are psychics real in Murdoch? So this In is, this episode, yes. So this is my theory. Every show has a Bible, okay? It, it describes all the characters. It's the rules setting, of the world. The rules of the world. Yes. And I think everyone assumed that that supernatural stuff was off the table. Mm -hmm. And this writer wrote this episode and they were like, we need to put a thing in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. I think there were probably logical explanations for how she would have known things, but they got cut. Yes. That's what I think. I also think that. Who sends the letter? We're saying Benny sends the letter? Benny sends the letter. Okay. Did this Benny is a whole Dora episode with Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Did Benny write the letters on the rock? I'm assuming Benny wrote the letters. I think he had to have. Had to have. How long was Benny in institution? We think two years. Yep. Why did he wait so long to strike? Well, I think he had to really investigate Dr. Burrito. <laughs> I think he was a coward. Ooh, but he's certainly crazy now. And I think he was afraid to take action. And I think Mr. Season 3D, Mr. Nesbitt, was working on his wheelchair and figured out he could move. Yeah, and he, so, so he had to do something. He to He's do like, something. okay, now's the time. I think also, I'm not going to be able to pull this off much longer. I, we didn't talk about it, but also when Miss Pencil finally figures out that it's him um, and he's revealed as someone who can talk and move, it is the most expected reveal ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's... Again, it goes back to You're Agatha like, Christie. Whoa, oh, really? A, he can move? It's a character in a, in a wheelchair. Oh, yeah. They I obviously bet you he can, can walk. Yeah. yeah. All right. Best corpse, Grout, Nesbitt, or Barrington? I kind of like Barrington on the park bench dead. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to go Grout. Okay. Just because he has to run with arrows in his back. He's got, and they can't bounce. Yeah. They can't be like, boing, 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 boing. These are just duct tape to my jacket arrows and he has to like he screams and begs and then he gets shot again and has to go face down yep after the credits miss pencil goes to Prague and is never heard of again but what about her hat mark like maybe is grayson gonna keep the institute um i hope so in that he can turn into an actual scientist and learn some things in the future. Now, the the mental institute is kind of replaced in season two with another mental institute run by a much cooler cat. Mm -hmm. So, I think Miss Pringle's going to leave. I think so. Because she doesn't need to be there. No. And I don't know about Horton. He's he probably going to stay. Yeah. Knowing high society at this point, Grayson is just going to brush this off and say, oh, Benny was just way farther sick than we knew. Knowing what I do, particularly about 19th century asylums, don't even get me started. And I know this is not an asylum, but they are treated so fantastically well. It's because they're rich. Yeah. And they're it's voluntary. It's rich and voluntary. Yeah. You're right. I mean, Miss Pencil just walks in and goes, can I stay here? Oh. And they're like, well, you've got money, so yeah. Yeah, rich, white, and... You have a nice hat, so you can stay. Yeah, and they're white. Feathery yeah. hat. Yeah. And you want to hold seances in your room? That's yeah. cool. It's okay, as long as Bracken Reed doesn't fart. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like smoke. <laughs> I have a horrible movie for you. Okay. Hit us up with the horrible movie. I am so confident that you have not seen this movie. Okay. I am, like, supremely confident. Okay. Even though it's from 2020. Oh, yeah, it it's is a pandemic movie. It is recent. Yeah. And I'm going to say you didn't see it. OK. Uh, so Stephen Bogert, who plays Benny, the killer, yes. is in this movie. He's in this movie. OK. Are you ready for this for the description uh, of the movie? OK. Hit me. <laughs> I have not looked on IMDb at him or anything like that. OK. When a possessed pair of jeans begins to kill the staff. Whoa, of a trendy whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> 
Yeah, you heard me. A possessed <laughs> pair of jeans. Like blue jeans? Yes. Okay. Wait till you see the stills from this movie. It's amazing. When a possessed this is the sisterhood of the murdering kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. How a pair of jeans draws blood, I don't know. It can only strangle people. I mean, that's all it can do. At best. Right? Maybe. When a possessed pair of jeans begins to kill the staff of a trendy clothing store, it's up to Libby, an idealistic young sales clerk, to stop its bloody rampage. How does it be? How is it bloody? I don't know. How d- who possesses a pair of pants? I don't the worst know. Demon ever. I'm guessing you haven't seen it. No. So you don't know what it's called. No. Sisterhood of the Murdering Pants. <laughs> Do you give up? Yes. It's called Slacks. S L A X X. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I got to look this movie up. Man, oh, man. The stills of the jeans flying through the air at people are just fantastic and somehow some guy gets absolutely covered in blood i don't know if it like can the jeans wield weapons or something i don't know wow yeah and the pandemic doesn't explain it because it would have been filmed before yeah (laughs) so it wasn't like somebody in a fever dream made this movie slacks s-l-a-x-x oh i'm putting this movie poster on in the show notes too because it is also a fantastic movie poster. Mm-hmm. There's a point for me. That is a point for you. Because that is a horrible movie that you have not seen. I have not seen. You have not seen Slax. You have to pronounce two X's. It looks kind of like a Gap store, too. Yeah, it kind of does. All right. What's next week? So. Episode 12. Next week, episode 12, The Prince and the Rebel. It's not a bonkers episode like this episode is a bonkers episode, but it is bonkers. It's really a George episode. Oh, I just figured out something amazing. What? It wasn't Benny. Oh, who Benny's not the killer. Benny's wearing possessed pants. (laughs) That's what makes him walk. That get him up out of the chair and make him kill. There we go. I figured it out. Yes, yes, you did. Solution. So the pr- the Prince and the Rebel is all about uh, Irish uh, independence and the royalty, but really, and it, it's an excuse for the Prince of Wales to come to Toronto and party, mm-hmm. and, and, and for Crabtree to have to keep track Crab of Crabtree to keep track of him. keep him out of trouble. So, so then uh, after that, June fifth, we will be releasing episode thirteen, which is the final episode of season one, "The Annoying Red Planet," which is one of our favorite episodes. Of the- so good. Now we have some also amazing stuff coming down the pipe. Yes, absolutely. Super cool. Yes. I'm Top gonna, secret interviews that I'm, we're not going to tell you I'm about yet. going to end the calendar there, but stay like. It, we're not going away. The June newsletter is one to be watching. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Bombshells. Yep. So you do an interview with a movie star and other people come calling. Yeah, it's for sure. Absolutely fantastic. All right. Where can they find us? They can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and email for all the things of uh, Mystery Maniacs podcast, as well as on YouTube. And if you're listening to us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. There's and also the a bell. subreddit yes, where you can chitty also chat a subreddit about, about possessed pants if you want. About possessed pants and all those good things. Please. If you are listening on YouTube, please subscribe because we're about 80% of the people who watch on YouTube are not subscribed. Oh, so. yeah. And it matters. Yep. It matters to us. Yes. So, oh, and we're uh, almost done the the 31st of May, which is uh, about a little over a week away, uh, will be our last sort of raising money through merch for... Um, Target ovarian cancer. Target ovarian cancer. And then we have another charity already chosen for the second half of the mm-hmm. year. And then uh, we're also, uh, we got to tell you folks, we're not exactly pleased with Spreadshirt. Yeah. We're we're having some problems with them. And uh, to me, they take a little too much off the talk, top and take too long to get products out. Yeah. So we're investigating other methods of getting products to you. Yes. So we can have a, a broader diversity of merch that is more reliably delivered yes, at a lower price. At a lower price. Yeah. So so we'll let you know. 
But that, in the meantime, it is perfectly fine to buy stuff from there. Yep. The proceeds will still go to the right place. Still going to the right place, which is Target Ovarian Cancer. Again, if you haven't listened to it, go listen to the Annette Badland uh, interview. Many people have said, many people have said, this is the most concise explanation of ovarian cancer symptoms that they've ever heard. Yeah. And she's really fun. And she's spectacularly fun. Yes. All right. Until next time. Bye, maniacs. Bye, maniacs. Wow, that joke just (laughs) fell flat.